marketing I've said before is two things. On the one hand, it's, it's a business discovering its calling. On the other hand, which I'll talk about here, marketing is on the other hand, a continual ministry to your audience. So marketing is two things, inner exploration and outer service, right? So I've talked about inner exploration elsewhere. Let's talk about outer service. So when I am doing marketing, most of my marketing effort and most of my marketing ad dollars are spent just sharing content with the world. I mean, as you can, for example, um, on Instagram, you know, out of, out of these Instagram posts, how many are trying to sell something? Not selling anything, 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 not selling anything. Not selling anything. Where's the, the next thing I'm selling something? Right here, I'm selling something there. Now, that's actually a smaller percentage than I would recommend. I, I'd recommend a 20, 80. So for every five posts that you make, you sell something. But for me, because my launch, my launch rhythm now is, is the way it is, um, you know, I actually have more content-based posts than I have selling posts that I would recommend to most people who need clients. If you need clients, you should do an 80-20 uh, ratio, meaning 80% of your, of your posts are simply serving, simply ministering, simply a cause. You, you, have, you believe in a, a particular philosophy, worldview, message, tool, modality, process, way of thinking, way of being, way of interacting with life. You believe in something that you think, if, this were, if more people understood this, especially the kinds of people that I would love to help, if more of them understood this, they would have a better life. They would have a better they would have better health. They would have better relationships. They'd have better work. They had better you know, spiritual growth. Whatever it is you help people with. That stuff is most of what I post in my field. Of course, my field help people with marketing and business and productivity stuff. So I post mostly helpful, inspiring, uplifting content. Marketing is ministry, in my opinion. So in other words, when we minister to somebody or when we, when we champion a cause, do we go, if I'm ministering to somebody, I go, okay, I'm ministering to 100 people, all 100, 100, all 100 of you, uh, then now that I minister to you, you better buy from me. That's not a ministry. That's a quid pro quo. Okay. That's a very attachment driven relationship, transactional based relationship. Of course, transactions happen with successful marketing, but I don't expect that just because I minister to 100 people, all 100 people are going to buy from me. I'm, I, I, I call it bless and let go. That's the core of authentic marketing in this realm. Bless and let go. I'm just going to bless as many people as I can with my content. Those who resonate with me will continue to follow my content and hopefully keep getting blessed by it. But they never have to buy from me if they don't want to. Never. I don't expect anybody in my audience to buy from me. Now, if somebody buys from me, I, I consider that to be an enormous blessing that they decided to spend some money with me and some time with my product or service. Wonderful. What a, what a, what a joy. But I don't expect that in my marketing. George, how can you? Marketing is about getting clients. You're ridiculous. Fine, you could, you could do whatever, you can think about it however you want. But I have found this philosophy to be much more fulfilling, essentially. I, I'm, in, I'm in joy every day, you know, when I do my marketing. I'm not trying to get you to buy. I'm not trying to do da, da, da. I'm trying to figure out my calling with inner exploration. And I'm trying to serve as many people as I can, hands off. If they happen to comment, what a blessing. If they happen to share, oh my goodness. If they happen to buy later, it's, it's like heaven, you know? it's business heaven, right? So that way, um, we don't just think of marketing as, you know, when we need clients, I'm, you know, then we do marketing. And when we, when we have plenty of clients, we don't do marketing anymore until we need clients. That's, 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 a, that's a very mainstream or very old school way of thinking of marketing. So uh, let me just also recommend that I have a blog post called business business time. Uh, and you, you, uh, you, want, you might want to look, in, look through this blog post and basically figure out a 10 hour a week rhythm for business development and for admin. So the 10 hours a week I've outlined here will help you to have enough time in your business for admin and for marketing as the way I've talked about it and for connecting with your peers and colleagues 
it does not include uh, client time. Client time would be above and uh, above and beyond those ten hours a week. Now, those of you who are a full time job, you're care, you're you're a parent with for, with young children. Uh, you might not even do ten hours a week uh, in business development. Try to you know you can shrink that probably down to five hours a week, right? If you're super super busy. But yeah, if you not if you can't even do five hours a week of business development, it's really hard to build a business. Now again, that's above and beyond uh, client work, right? So uh, so let me just stop that segment for now, and let's see if any questions.